light introduction light is a form of energy it travels at a very high speed we are able to see things only because light from them enters our eyes have you ever been frightened by your own shadow shadows occur due to the fact that light travels in a straight line this property is called rectilinear propagation of light light exhibits typical phenomenon of wave motion such as reflection refraction and formation of images rectilinear propagation of light light travels in a straight line this is called the rectilinear propagation of light while seeing a film in a cinema hall you may have noticed that the light from the projector appears to go in a straight line towards the screen in a cinema hall what you see is not light itself but innumerable dust particles in the path of light which become visible when light falls on them the above example shows that light travels in straight lines this phenomenon is called the rectilinear propagation of light formation of day and night suggests that light travels in a straight line if this were not so then light would have curved around the earth and there would have been sunlight during night formation of shadows suggests that light travels in straight lines when a beam of sunlight enters a dark room through a small hole we can see the beam of light traveling in straight lines when the headlight of a car is switched on the light rays appear to travel in straight lines rectilinear experiment take three cardboards a b and c with fine holes at their centers place a lighted candle or bulb on one side and arrange the boards such that the holes are in straight line viewing from the other side you will find that the light from the candle is seen only when all the three holes are in a straight line if one of the cardboard is displayed sideways the light is no longer seen this clearly demonstrates that light travels in a straight line path reflection of light when a ray of light while traveling from one optical medium to another optical medium say from air to glass strikes the surface of separation of the two media the following situations can arise one the ray of light may be returned by the second optical medium into the first optical medium with a change in angle this phenomenon is called reflection of light two the ray of light may get absorbed by the medium three the ray may pass through the second optical medium with a change in angle this phenomenon is called refraction of light the return of light into the same medium after striking a surface is called reflection regular reflection regular reflection occurs when a beam of light falls on a smooth and polished surface example plane mirror if a parallel beam of light falls on a plane mirror the reflected beam is also parallel and is in a fixed direction irregular reflection it takes place when the reflecting surface is not smooth or polished for example wall wood paper and metal in this case the different parts of the surface reflect the incident light in different directions if a parallel beam of light is incident on a rough surface the reflected light spreads over a wide range of area such a reflection is called diffused or irregular reflection it is the diffused light which enables us to see through such objects around us differences between real and virtual images are shown above mirror any smooth polished surface which can return the ray of light into the same medium is called a mirror looking glass is the best example of a mirror any highly polished metal surface also acts as a mirror still water or oil have a smooth surface and hence act like a mirror even highly polished furniture act like mirrors spherical mirrors there are two types of spherical mirrors one concave mirrors and two convex mirrors as shown in the figure in a concave mirror its outer surface is polished and in the case of a convex mirror its inner surface is polished usually a spherical mirror is represented by drawing its section 
pole. The central point of a mirror is called its pole. Center of curvature, the center of the sphere of which the mirror is a part, is called the center of curvature of the mirror. Focus. If rays of light parallel to the principal axis are incident on a concave mirror, they converge to a point F on the principal axis after reflection from the mirror. This point is called focus of the concave mirror. Focal length. The distance FP between the center of curvature C of the mirror and its pole P is called the focal length of the mirror. If a point source of light is placed at the focus of a concave mirror, the rays of light starting from focus after reflection from the mirror are rendered parallel to the principal axis, as shown in figure. Formation of images with convex mirror. Convex mirrors always produce virtual images of the objects placed in front of them. The images produced are erect but smaller in size and formed behind the mirror. Figure shows the formation of the image of an object. Because of this property of convex mirrors, drivers of cars, trucks and buses, etc. use convex mirrors to get a wide view of the whole traffic coming from behind. Lenses Lenses are made of any transparent material having polished curved surfaces. These surfaces may be spherical or cylindrical. However, we will be considering lenses with spherical surfaces. Convex lenses Convex lenses are thicker in the center and become thinner at the edges as shown in the figure. Rays of light passing through a convex lens converge to one point after refraction. This is why a convex lens is also called a converging lens. A convex lens both of whose surfaces are convex is called a double convex lens. We will be studying about these lenses only as they are very commonly used in cameras, projectors, telescopes and microscopes, etc. If a beam of light parallel to the principal axis is passed through the lens, it converges at a point F called the focus of the lens. Concave lenses Concave lenses are thinner at the center and thicker at the edges, as shown in the figure. Rays of light passing through a concave lens appear to diverge from a point, as shown in figure. So, concave lenses are also called diverging lenses. All objects appear smaller when seen through a concave lens. The figure shows concave lenses of different types. If a beam of light parallel to the principal axis is passed through a concave lens, it diverges and the diverging rays appear to come from a point F on the principal axis. This point is said to be the focus of the concave lens. Newton's Color Disc Isaac Newton devised a special disc which is now known as Newton's Color Disc. It is used to show how colors are able to mix together. It is a demonstration apparatus to show color mixing by rotating a disc of color sectors. When the disc is still, it consists of individual colors marked as different sectors. But when the disc is rotated with a high angular speed, the colors seem to mix together and give an impression of the disc being of just one color, that is, white. The immediate combinations of these three colors are cyan, produced by the mixing of blue and green, yellow, produced by the mixing of red and green, and magenta produced by the mixing of red and blue, as shown in the figure. These three colors are known as secondary colors or complementary colors. In correct combination, they can give back the primary colors. Yellow and cyan give green, cyan and magenta give blue, and magenta and yellow give red, as shown in figure. The mixing together of colors is utilized in electronic displays, like television screens. A color television screen consists of tiny dots of red, green and blue that are present throughout the screen as sets of three. These colors are lighted up by an electron beam that sweeps the whole screen in a very short time, lighting up specific colors of different sets, which then form a picture on the screen that is seen from some distance away from the screen.